Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how you can get started with Selenium. People who don't know what Selenium is, Selenium is an automated web browser tool that you can use for performing actions on web browser for your application. You can check if your application is working fine or not before your client tells you that the application is working fine or not. You can write some tests using Selenium and run those tests whenever you release your application for your changes so that you can confirm that other features of your application are working fine after making changes in your application that your client is not telling that you know you fixed something but you broke something else you know so in this video we are going to write a test which is going to check if blazingchat.com is up and running or not and then we are going to use selenium to enter username and password of julius caesar and then click on login button and see if we get hello julius caesar at gmail.com message when we log in using julius caesar's email address and password or not that way i can tell that my application is up and running and user can get into the system using their email address and password and i can also run these tests whenever i make changes in my application um, in pipeline so that I can tell that the application is working fine even after making changes in my application. So let's get started and use Selenium and write a test to see if we can log in into Blazing Chat or not. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is get the web driver for the browser that you're going to use for testing. I'm going to use Chrome browser, so I'm going to get the Chrome driver for my demo, but you can get the web driver for Firefox, Edge, Safari, any browser that you like. So you can go to this link in order to get the web driver. I'll share this link in the video description and you should get the web driver version for the version that you're using for your Chrome. Or you can get the older version of two, but you can't get like a new version of web driver and use an older version of the web browser. So I'm going to get this 97. I've already gotten it actually, but you can get it for Mac, Linux. If you're using these operating systems, you can get these Chrome drivers for them too. I've already downloaded this Windows 32 version of Chrome driver and I have kept it in a folder in Curious Drive here. This is the web driver, Chrome driver that I've downloaded. And we are going to use this in our project. So for that, I'm going to go to my Visual Studio. And Blazing Chat is an open source application. It's also deployed in production. You can go to blazingchat.com, you know, create a user and see if you can get into the system. But it is an application which is open source and it's in production and we are going to make sure that our blazing chat application is up and running and we, if we can get into the system or not so first thing that i'm going to do is add a end unit project and you can add any testing framework that you like i like end unit but uh, if you like x unit or ms test you can add test project of that in your solution and then i'm gonna keep that project in my tests folder and you know the source code is on github you can check that in the video description and i'm gonna name my um unit test project as blazing chat functional tests and then go to next i'm gonna use dotnet 6 framework and then i'm gonna create that will create a unit test project in my solution with a sample file unit test one with class test. And in this, we have a setup method and a sample test, and we need to use this in order to set up our tests and you know perform our tests. First thing that I'm gonna need to do is to add a package in my project. For that, I'm gonna go to manage NuGet packages, and here I'm going to look up for Selenium and install this Selenium web driver package in my project. 
and then let's also update the other packages which need update i would like to have updated version of packages in my project so i'm gonna do that too and then we're going to use that package in order to write test but then i'm gonna go back to my unit test file here and here i'm gonna add some properties on top of this test post which are going to help me set up the web driver so the properties that i'm going to add are going to be these the first property is actually the web driver that we're going to use and this web driver is in selenium package so i'm going to add a namespace open QA selenium i'm going to add that and then we have a couple of string properties the first one is driver path which is the path where i downloaded the driver and the second one is the base url where you know the application is so that we know where to go to and test our application now that we have this web driver we need to assign this web driver to assign this web driver i'm going to add a method which is going to help me assign it and if you look at this method it says get chrome driver and it's getting a chrome driver but the return type is web driver that way you can you know have an abstract relationship with the driver that you're getting and you can get driver of edge browser or firefox or safari if you like in the future but right now i'm just going to get the chrome driver and it takes the driver path and options so chrome options and we'll talk about this headless option in a moment but i'm going to add some namespaces to get rid of these compile time errors and it gets the chrome driver you know using the driver path you know this is where the driver is you know you can assign this headless option and the timeout of the driver so once we have this method we can use this method to assign our web driver in our setup method so i'm going to add a couple of lines which is going to assign my web driver the property using the get chrome driver method that we just added and i'm also telling my web driver the implicit wait time is going to be 120 seconds that means it will wait for my application to get loaded for 120 seconds before it can start performing the test and then if you're adding a setup method you should always add a teardown method which is going to dispose the objects that you're using for your test so I'm going to add a teardown method, which is going to quit the web driver after the tests are completed. You don't want to keep the web driver and the web browser open after tests are complete. You should close them so that your machine is not using memory for you know, useless things. Now that we have the setup method, we have the teardown method, our web driver is assigned. We can use this in order to perform a test. So I'm going to write a test which is going to check if the page title of Blazing Chat is Blazing Chat or not. So it's going to navigate to this URL. It's going to check if the page title is Blazing Chat or not. That way I can tell if my application is up and running or not. So I'm going to add a couple of lines in this test one method, which is going to be as page title Blazing Chat, where I'm using the web driver and I'm navigating to the base URL and then i'm using assert method which is you know unit test method assert r equal where web driver's title matches blazing chat or not so let's run this and see how it looks like i'm going to quickly run this and i'm going to you know remove my hands from keyboard and mouse and you'll see what happens so if i click on play test it will open a browser and it will go to that url and it's going to check if the page title is blazing chat or not and it's going to pass my test you can see that i did not do anything it opened the web driver it opened the web browser and it checked that you know the page title is blazing chat or not if i change the title here it's going to fail so if i say blazing chat one and run my test then it's going to fail because it's not the actual page title doesn't match with the page title that you're using. So it's going to fail the test and it's going to tell us why it failed. It's going to tell in test summary that, you know, the expected is blazing chat one, but was blazing chat. Pretty cool, huh? 
let's go ahead and make it a little more complicated let's go ahead and write a test which is going to check if user can log in into the system or not for that i'm gonna add some lines of code and i promise i'll go through them one by one so i'm gonna add some code here which is going to check if user can log in into the system or not before i explain what i've written i'm going to add a namespace for this thread and we don't really need to use this but i've added the statement to show you how the web driver works so what's happening here is the web driver is going to the base url which is blazing chat.com and then it's going to enter the email address password and click on login button and it's going to validate the login message let's see how it does that so before entering the email address i'm waiting for five seconds to show you how the web driver is working but what web driver is going to do it's going to find the input email address id you know the html id so if i go to my browser here and open developer tools and hover over this text box you can see the id of the input is input email address i'm finding that i'm finding that here find element using uh, web driver i'm clearing the field and then i'm passing this julius caesar at gmail.com keys in that text box and then i'm doing the same thing for password so if i go to this second text box you can see the id of the password is input password and then i'm clearing the input text box and then passing julius caesar's password here and you sh you should be you know configuring this in app settings you shouldn't be hard coding email address and password in your unit test cases but this is um, you know just getting started so let's enter these email address and password in here and see what happens so after entering email address and password the final step is to click on button login so if i hover over that button login you can see that the id is button login so i'm finding that element by using web driver and then i'm clicking on it and if you click on it then it's going to connect to web driver it's going to authenticate to the user generate json web token send that json web token to the user to the browser and then it's going to log in into the system so there are so many things which are happening when you click on login but we need to make sure that our test is keep on checking if the welcome message which is hello julius caesar is there or not see how i've written that so here to make sure the login message is hello comma julius caesar at gmail.com or not i am using a while loop which is going to check if that is the case or not for every two seconds and the total timeout is 15 seconds that means i'm going to do this for overall for 15 seconds but every two seconds i'm going to check if the message the p message p paragraph welcome message is hello underscore julius caesar at gmail.com or not and if it's not if it's throwing an exception then it's going to sleep for two seconds and then do this again but if it crosses 15 seconds then i'm going to throw an exception saying that okay i'm not able to log in into the system now let's run this and see how it looks like so i'm going to open my test explorer and then i'm going to run this so this is going to open a web browser and it's going to enter julius caesar's email address it's going to enter julius caesar's password and it's going to click on see i'm not doing anything it's going to click on login and it's going to see if the welcome message is julius caesar hello underscore hello comma julius caesar or not and it's going to pass my test and like i said you don't have to add these sleep statements i did that to show you how web driver works so i'm going to comment these lines here and now if i run the test it's going to run 15 seconds faster because we are not you know waiting for these things to happen and it's going to quickly navigate to blazing chat enter email address and password of julius caesar and it's going to quickly check if i can 
log in into the system or not. And the best part is that you can run these tests headlessly. I talked about that when we started this video. That means it doesn't have to open a web browser in order to validate these things can happen or not. That's pretty cool, right? So if I run the test now, you can see that it's not going to open the web browser, but still it's going to perform all those tasks. And it's going to tell us if you can log in into the system or not. So I'll wait for some time here and you'll see that it's going to pass our test even after it's not going to open the web browser. You can see the test is passing now. And you can also run these tests in your command line. You can you know, run this .NET test command and you can run this command in your pipeline too to see if, you know, your application is working fine or not after making changes in your application. So this is how you can use Selenium. You'll see that it's going to run this test and it's going to pass our test because our tests do pass. And it's going to say that, you know, it passed completely. That's all about Selenium. This is how you can get started with Selenium. Like any other video, before I end the video, I would like to ask a question and let me know in the comment section of this video what the, what the answer is. So I want to know which company is maintaining the source code of Selenium. Let me know in the comment section. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section too, or you can reach out to me on my Twitter or Facebook handle. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.